severe injuries from always adapting to, to what they call the new normal. So guys remember, stay home, stay safe, and save lives. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Kidsley News. Today we have another special episode for you guys. Joining us in a Zoom call for an interview is Miss Karen Mensa. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. We're really glad that you can join us in the Zoom call today. It's an honor. It's a, it's a great honor <laughs> to be here. So can you please introduce yourself to our audience so they can get to know a little bit more about you? My name is Karen Mensa. I'm a mom of a 17-year-old. My son just graduated high school. Oh, wow. And he's going to go to Kennesaw State in the fall. I'm a flight attendant with Frontier Airlines currently. I worked previously with Ghana Airways and Ghana International before coming into the U.S. And I'm now with Frontier. Yeah, And I'm a teacher as well, so I doubled. As oh, a teacher. Okay. So actually, um, how does it feel like to always be in the air? Well, I've done it for quite a long time, so... I mean, it feels normal to me, but most of the time you find people who are a little nervous or um, they get sick, uh, sick when they're up in the air. But for me, it feels like I, I am much better up in the air than I'm on ground. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah, apart from when we get slight turbulence. Yeah. So on an airline, we have many passengers from many different countries and of many different backgrounds. So how do you assist passengers who maybe speak a different language? Well, I speak a little bit of French. Um, okay. Not so much, so don't ask me serious questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, normal questions like, um, how do you do, and uh, a little bit to help them around. Mm -hmm. And that we have um, here uh, at Frontier, we have a lot of passengers who speak Spanish. We've had a few German and Dutch. Um, Italian and Dutch. Usually we have flight attendants who speak a second language, so they're able to help with the translations. Oh, okay. So as a flight attendant, I've always wondered, do you guys get the chance to tour the many countries that your airline flies to? Oh, yes. So once you finish the, your trip, you, once you get to the end of your um, day, you yeah. uh, get on the shuttle to go to the hotel. And once you're in the hotel, you have a range of time that you're on your layover. Sometimes it's a 24 hour layover. Sometimes it's a short layover. It's as short as eight hours. We always need a minimum of eight hours So um, and nothing less. So once you're there, if you feel like going out, you can take Uber or go out and look around the city. So what's your favorite place that you've visited? I would say um, London. Yeah. So as a flight attendant of course you deal with many passengers who might be of course be scared of maybe turbulence how do you deal with those passengers usually we're trained to be able to um, profile people when they board the plane so you know those who are frequent flyers as soon as they get on the plane you can tell those who are frequent flyers they're not nervous they're so to talk to them calm them down and offer them a glass of water or um, a paper bag to breathe in and out slowly yeah so they teach us techniques to help the passengers um, overcome their fear. So what is a day-to-day -day life as a flight attendant like? Okay, so your day can start as early as 4 a.m. So sometimes when you have an early show, when we say early show, it may, the, uh, the show time is the time that you have to be, you have to be on the plane, your report time. So let's say you have a report time of 5 a.m. The shuttle will leave the hotel around 4 a.m. So that means I have to get up as early as 3 a.m., take a shower, get ready, and be downstairs in the hotel lobby at least 10 minutes before the shuttle leaves. So for a flight attendant, on time, it's late. For instance, if I get down, if the shuttle is leaving at 4, and I come downstairs at 4, I'm late for the shuttle. It might even leave right at 4 or a minute before. So you always have to be ahead of time or come earlier. So, and then... When you get to the airport, you have to give yourself enough time to grab some beverage or breakfast or something. And then you get on the plane, do your security checks, and then check your equipment and your service items that you're going to use for the flight. And we can go like from um, Orlando, which is my base. We can go from Orlando to San Francisco, or we can, and then that's a long flight from 
MCO to San Francisco is like um, five and a half hours. So that's a long flight. Usually you wouldn't have another flight, but sometimes you have an hour, another hour flight after that. And then when you get off, you just go to the hotel and rest. Or you can have a three-leg flight. A three-leg flight is uh, making two stops, and it's it involves three cities. So we can go from Orlando to Atlanta and to um, maybe St. Louis or somewhere. Okay. So how has COVID-19 impacted your airlines? Well, it has greatly. It has impacted the airline and the fact that um, we used to fly a lot. For, so now they've cut down to about 30%. So they're flying at the minimum. So if, for instance, we had about 10 flights a day from Orlando to Denver, they've been reduced. The flights have been reduced to maybe two flights a day. And then a lot of people are home. So we have because we have a few flights in a day, not everybody can work. So we're offered leave of absence or unemployment option. I chose the leave of absence option. So and because I commute from Atlanta, I live in Atlanta because I commute from Atlanta to Orlando to start my day, it wasn't favorable for me. So I had to do the leave of absence and stay home. Yeah. Because you can get stuck at the airport if let's say I'm leaving Atlanta and there's only one flight and I'm not able to get on, then I can't go to work. So yeah, yeah, it's really affected. So what are some things that COVID-19 has impacted when it comes to like your day-to-day -day things that flight attendants do? Well, uh, my colleagues, some of them call me a uh, germophobic. I've always carried my hand sanitizers. I wipe down um, the seats, headsets. We always, we all use the same headsets on the plane if oh. let's say we want to call the captain we use it i can use it somebody else can use it so i always try to wipe it down with a lysol wipe mm -hmm. and with the covid it's even worse so we have to sanitize everything keep washing our hands and even before the covid as a flight attendant it's just a rule an international rule that you wash your hands every few minutes with soap and water and wash it thoroughly and not just really fast but for about 20 seconds. So as we're nearing the end of our interview, is there any advice you'd like to give to those who maybe want to do what you do? Sure, I would tell uh, anyone who wants to be a flight attendant to study hard, go to school. You always need your um, at least high school diploma, but it's always good to have a first degree. I have my first degree from the University of Ghana. And um, thanks to your grandma, she was my um, senior, um, house mistress when I was in high school and I went to school with your mom so yeah so you have to go to school and the training is really tough so yeah. you get trained and we have a flight attendant manual usually people think being a flight attendant is all about um, serving tea and coffee but it's not just that we have this big manual that every airline has it's really thick so you have to i mean you're trained first day train we're trained as firefighters and security officers when there's a fight on the plane we have to deal with it when there's fire we have to quench the fire so we're trained cpr trained we're trained like to act as nurses and then if we have a medical emergencies we have um, we page for medical assistance and all that so i'll ask anybody who wants to be a flight attendant to Go to school, study hard, and it's a great job to do. I mean, you are exposed to the world, so it's good. Right, because anything can happen, and you guys have to be prepared for anything at all times. Yes, right. Yes, we always have to be prepared. So on our show, we like to give our guests a chance to send any wishes to loved ones, family, or friends. Are there any you would like to send? Yes, I want to say congratulations to my son, Malcolm, for graduating high school, and wish my parents in Ghana well and my friends and family here and also my friend Misty and her husband Joe Thompson they are great friends they take care of my son stays with them when I'm working so they've been a great help to me and my uncle Noble and his wife Ruby. So as we're still going through this pandemic we have this quote that we have our guests say it's stay home stay safe to help save lives you can say that in like any like tone you want to. Okay so stay home, stay safe, save a life. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us in the Zoom call. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you have a great day. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yep. 
thanks for watching this episode of Kizzly News. We hope you enjoyed it. For more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell. Make sure to check out Kizzly News' Instagram account at Kizzly News. The link will be down below in the description. Thanks for watching this episode of Kizzly News. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye. And once again, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome.